Today, we're gonna to talk about your guest Wi-Fi network and why you should be using it. Stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to be talking about guest networks and if you've purchased a router or a modem over the last 10 years or so, you've probably seen something about a guest network in the settings of that router. So what exactly is a guest network? Well, it's essentially a guest network, a Wi-Fi network that you can uh, connect any type of guest to and that isolates it from your main network away from like your personal belongings, your personal like wireless devices where they can't communicate to each other. So in today's video, we're gonna cover how to set that up, what settings are good to have on, what settings are good to have off. And then of course, towards the end, we're gonna answer why it's a good idea to be using a guest network. Before we hop on over to the computer, if you get something out of this video, if you like it, be sure to drop a like and sub uh, for the YouTube algorithm. We just hit over 50K, so congratulations to those winners, uh, but we wanna continue to grow. So if you could do that, that would definitely help us grow. And of course, you can head on over to shop.helpcloud.com and check out some of our cool merch that we've got over there. So with that stuff out of the way, let's hop on over to the computer and show you how to configure your guest network. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is of course get logged in to your router. Uh, yours might be a little bit different as far as your IP address is. Typically the default is 192.168.1.1. Mine is going to be a little bit different. Now is a good time to pull out your manual or maybe even find a digital version of the manual of your router in order to get logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my router here. You're going to want to provide your username and password. Again, if you've changed this, you're going to want to either remember what that was or try to find it. In any case, if you didn't change it, uh, you may want to look on the bottom of the router or modem because typically they will list that information on like a little sticker on the bottom there. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in. Perfect. Now, once you are logged into your router, uh, again, your screen might be a little bit different, hence the manual that I had you pull out. Uh, I'm working on a Netgear Nighthawk uh, X6 R7900 to be specific. But in any case, you're going to want to navigate through the interface to find where your guest network information is. So you can see right here, I'm on the basic tab, but you'll notice right on the left hand side, I've got a guest network right here. Yours might be listed under wireless. You may need to go into an advanced section if you have one. You're just going to want to type in guest network and then maybe your router number. If you can find your manual on Google to see if you can find some instructions on where to find that info. So uh, we're going to click on guest network here. This is all of the area that you're going to use to change all of the different types of settings when it comes to your guest network. And we're just going to work our way from top to bottom. Now, some routers like this one will allow you to enable two different guest networks, one on a 2.4 gigahertz and one on a 5 gigahertz band. As we go through these, you're going to see which ones I have enabled or disabled. So starting from the very top, I've got wireless network 2.4 BGN. That's your 2.4 gigahertz network you can see that I have the enable guest network turned on. Now, of course, if yours is unchecked or turned off, that means your guest network is not functioning at least for the 2.4 gigahertz network. Mine is currently on, so you're gonna wanna have that check mark on. This is up to preference. The next option is enable the SSID broadcast. What that means is if you were to have somebody come over and you wanted them to connect to your guest network, if the SSID broadcast is disabled, they're not going to see that network name. Even if they're in range, broadcasting is something that they can connect to. This, this will need to be enabled in order for them to see that guest network. If you don't have the SSID broadcasted, you can still manually connect to it by going in on the mobile device and basically connecting to it manually, like connect to a new network. You type in the name, the password, etc., and it will connect it to it but it's just not broadcasting the name. So this makes it really easy to use if you want to uh, broadcast the SSID or the name. Uh, going down just a little bit further here, the guest wireless network name SSID, this is the name of the network that you're going to choose. So in this case, I've, con I've set it as commission control guest. So if this is broadcasting, it's going to broadcast this name. Get it? Got it? Good. The other option is allow guests to see each other and access my local network. This should be disabled because this is the function that allows you to separate and isolate the two networks. So you've got your main network where all of your personal belongings are on, um, that all of your computers and things like that are connected to. You don't want guests typically having access to that. So you're going to want to make sure that this is disabled. Again, your verbiage may vary, but do not enable this because that completely defeats the purpose of a guest network. Security options, you've got none. 
You've got WEP, you've got WPA2-PSK, you've got various forms of security options. I typically just default to the WPA2-PSK. Um, I will include an article down below of the different levels of security that each one of these utilize. Uh, the only one that I would prefer not to use, actually the two of them, is none and WEP. Those are older technology, obviously none, there's no password at all, but WPE is an older encryption type. You should probably stick to these two. And again, I'll just post a link down below that kind of goes in depth for those. Once you have set up a an option, so if we change it to WEP or WPA2 or you know WPPSK, right below that, you're gonna have the option to type in whatever network key or password you wanna set for that specific guest network. So again, I'm just gonna do mission, mission control guest. This is the password that you'll provide to those that you want to uh, set up on the network. Going a little bit further, we're just gonna basically repeat the steps that we did before, but you can see that we've got a wireless network, five gigahertz, ANAC, um, same options, enable the guest network, enable SSID broadcast. You can change the wireless network name SSID, but again, do not check the allow guests to see each other and access my local network. Now this specific router allows me to have three different uh, networks. I can do the 2.4, and then I can have two different five gigahertz bands with completely separate SSID um, uh, SSIDs and passwords. So now, of course, whenever you have all of your settings all set up and ready to go, you're just gonna come up here and you're going to click the apply button or the save button, whatever applies to your specific router or modem, it's going to update the settings and now you should be able to test and connect that guest network via a wireless device. So that leaves us with the question is, why should I be using a guest network? And the simple answer is, it's just a security precaution. If you have a friend who brings over a friend, it's a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, and you don't know what kind of weird shit that friend is into, you don't want them accessing any type of files, If you, especially if you have like file share set up through your network, you don't want them to access any type of personal files that may be on one of your other machines. You don't know the capabilities that they have to go through and like hack the network or you know hack into something or whatever you wanna call it. It's a good idea to keep them isolated from their network. Another example is if you have a lot of smart home devices, so maybe like a door cam or things like that, chances are if you can access that device, so can the manufacturer, so why not put them on a guest network and keep them isolated from the main network? So those are just a few examples of why it's probably a good idea to be using your guest network at the very least if you don't want to go to that extreme because some people may say this is pretty extreme. I would at least enable the guest network and have a nice little password on there that you can connect your guests to, especially if they're like temporary guests. And obviously if you trust that specific person, then you can throw them on your main network. But typically you're gonna get the same type of bandwidth on a guest network that you would on the main network. The only advantage is you're keeping them isolated on the two different networks. So I know that's a lot of information probably thrown at you guys. So I hope you guys got something out of it. I hope you liked this video. That is gonna wrap it up for this week's video, or at least today's video. I hope you guys liked it. Be sure to like, share, and of course subscribe. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. If you have any concerns about this, or if you just wanna talk about what type of guest networks, leave your answers down below as well, and I'll answer those as soon as I can. So that being said, thank you guys all so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Peace. <gasps>